Ahoy and welcome to this narrowboat adventure. So today we're here to talk about GPs or general practitioners. Um, so as a boater, especially as a continuous cruiser, there can be difficulties in seeing a GP. Um, so mostly this is going to be from a London perspective because I don't have the perspective of having spent much time being unwell in other areas of the country. Um, so it seems like there are kind of three options if you need to see a GP and you're a boater. So the first option we tried for the last couple of years, which was we simply did not tell them that we had moved once we moved onto the boat. And we just continued carrying on going back to where we used to live to our old GP. And this was fine to a point until recently when they've now um, changed all of their booking to being online bookings and all of the repeat prescriptions to uh, online. Sorry about the train noise if you can hear that. Um, so the problem being that when you go to use the online, you have to have gone into the GP and given them proof of address, which we don't have because we don't live there anymore. So that kind of made it so the only way we could make an appointment would be to call on the day which as I'm sure you all know is very competitive and the only way obviously in doing that if, if it's something that's not that like immediate of an ailment like for instance uh, if I wanted a repeat prescription I'm taking away an appointment from somebody else who probably needs it more than me so it kind of left us in this position where it was really difficult for us to make an appointment and get repeat prescriptions without taking away an appointment from someone who really needs it. So the second option is walk-in centres. There's walk-in centres pretty much everywhere. Certainly in London there's a lot of them, but at walk-in centres a lot of them don't have experience with specific things. Um, I've certainly been to walk-in centres where they've gone, oh, I don't really know about this specific area of the body or whatever. And also you can end up queuing up to sort of four hours. Um, walk-in centres are not ideal because of that, really. And also because, I mean, I think that's really the main reasons, the massive queues and the fact that some of the doctors at walk-in centres don't have experience with certain general practitioner type ailments. Um, and then the third, uh, the third option is the one I want to talk to you most about today as it is very, very new and it is a free option as well available for the NHS and it is the NHS at hand app. So I've got my phone here and I'm going to walk you through my experience with it. Um, so what the NHS at hand app is, is basically it's an app where you can make an appointment to speak to a GP via phone or video. If they need you to come in, there's a certain, there, I don't know about the whole country, but in North London, I think there's five different practices that you can go to if you need to see a real doctor. And they'll arrange for you to go to the closest one after the phone or video appointment. Um, and then they can also send your prescriptions to any pharmacy that you like. Full disclosure, I work with uh, doctors in one of my roles and the general consensus from the doctors is that this is not going to be a good thing overall but I think for boaters this is a very good thing so I'm going to show you how you can download the app register and get yourself the ability to have a doctor's consultation over the phone or in a video chat using your phone you will need a smartphone for this um, so essentially what you have to do is you go onto the app store and you download an app called Babylon and then it's going to ask you to set it up so you need to put in some information I'm going to block out some information um, so some information about myself and also about the doctor that uh, whose name will come up later on in the video that's really just for privacy reasons um, so what I've done with the postcode is I picked a random postcode um, I would say the best thing to do is to go for like a business or a, um, a GP surgery. Um, because then, I mean, realistically, they're probably not going to send anything to you. You can request the doctor not to send anything to you via post. And if it's addressed to you, then nobody else should open it anyways. 
Um, so when you're on there, you put in all your details, you take a picture of some ID and you put in the details of your previous GP so that they can get your records from them. So just to be very clear, what you are doing here is you are changing your GP surgery. So if you're currently with one that you get on with, don't sign up to this app because you will be deregistered from the one you're currently with and registered with one of the ones that hosts uh, Babylon. Uh, a lot of people have found that that's not very clear. So I just want to be really clear about that. You're re-registering with a new GP. For me, that's essential because I can't see my current GP as it is. And once you're all done filling in the data portion, you can simply click on the uh, the little calendar button down at the bottom, which is an appointment section. You choose your name. Uh, you're most often going to need a GP. And when it says prescribing pharmacist, you only click that if you've been told to do that. A message comes up and tells you that. And then you can click the next appointment. Um, so for me, the next one is in 10 minutes, which has been the case almost every time that I've been on here. Aside from once when it was midnight, I wanted to book one for the next day and the next one was 3 a.m. So they're really like you really can be seen very, very quickly. And then you can choose whether you want a video chat or a phone chat. Um, I chose phone because I was just asking for a repeat prescription and um, for this one I'm just going to put test and then I'll cancel it and I'll actually make a real appointment in a minute um, where I add in specific notes and as you can see you can also add pictures. So then as the time comes up for you getting the appointment you get a couple of notifications reminding you and then exactly on the dot of the time somebody will give you a ring or a phone um, and then you have a normal doctor's appointment. Um, one thing that does come up here is the postcode issue. So I kind of just chose a random postcode, to be honest. I just picked a random address in the area that I knew that this service was eligible. Um, I would suggest probably the best way to do it would be just choosing a doctor's surgery or a public building. And then make sure to write that down because one of the first things the doctors did was ask me about this when I had my telephone uh, consultation so I, I didn't have it I explained that and it wasn't a problem but it might be a problem for other doctors so I think it's best to make sure to write down the fake address that you use. Okay so it's 40 minutes past now and I'm about to have my telephone appointment. Hello? My your name, date of birth and postcode for me, please. Yeah, it's Jasmine, the 3rd of July, 1990. Just give me one second to grab up the postcode. I live on a boat, so it's not my postcode that I've used. It's fine. You can just tell me your mobile number instead if you want. Um, I haven't been asked to give any proof of address. I've only been asked for identification for who I am, uh, for which I've used my driving licence. It has a completely different address on it. Um, and that's basically how the... Uh, NHS at hand app works um, I have to say it was really really good for me um, she asked where I wanted to have my prescription sent to and it was sent there um, within I think it was two hours within two hours the prescription was sent there my partner has had a consultation as well and he found it to be really good and really helpful his wasn't a pre repeat prescription his was a new ailment um, and they managed to uh, speak to him and figure out what was going on over the phone. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to let you guys know about this because I think this is actually rev revolutionary for voters. Oh, excuse the train noise. I think this is revolutionary. Re I think this development is revolutionary for both. Rev I think this think this uh, fuck my life I think this app is revolutionary for voters and being able to see doctors and I know that for some doctors this is not what they would like medicine to be but for people like us who have real troubles getting to see a doctor uh, I know it shouldn't be like that but it is this is very helpful and especially if I'm in Oxford I can still see a doctor I can still say a different postcode that I'm near and then they can deliver my medicine there like this just really changes the ball game quite a lot um, and aside from that we are so lucky to have this as something that's free as part of the NHS that can be used um, 
by anyone in this country. <laughs> um, you do the main thing that that people are upset about is that um, apparently some people think it isn't clear enough that when you register for this app you are registering at one of the GPs that has this app as part of their system. So you'll be deregistering from the GP you were with previously. That's not a problem for me because I couldn't see that GP anyway. There was basically only one way for me to be able to see them and that's not a way that I'm gonna do it if I'm not that ill. So for me, this was no issue at all, um, but just wanna be clear with everyone. Um, Everybody who's voter who's watching, let me know in the description what you found as a solution to um, seeing a GP. Obviously, I know there are walk-in centres, but often I've queued in walk-in centres in London for like four hours. So that's kind of a, a whole different thing as well, that, that every every single option that you have really to see a GP comes with its pros and cons. But for me, this is just a really, really good one. And I thought... I'd get the word out there and make it easier for you guys to understand how to sign up and what to expect on it before you actually have done it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this is useful and have a lovely day. Um, we'll see you very soon, probably on a Wednesday. Seems like I can only upload videos on Wednesday at the moment. I don't know why. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Bye.